Exhausted after swimming across a pool, this Huthia is resting on a trunk, celebrating the fact she has evaded all the dangers of the water. From the pool come the sounds of her worst enemies, but on land she is faster, and she seems to be rather overconfident as she gets her breath back. Every time she turns her back to the water, the dragons go on the alert. And silently, stealthily, death approaches. Luckily, she still has strength for one final leap, and on the safety of solid ground, the intrepid Hutia moves off, denying the voracious Cuban crocodile a prey he was sure was his. In the interior of the island, where the mangrove forest seems most impenetrable, the rocks are pierced by deep caverns that lead to the sea. These hidden, submerged caverns, unsuspected worlds where time appears to have stood still, are the home of one of the most fascinating and unknown creatures of the Cuban mangrove forest, the blind fish of the Cubanictus genus. Virtually nothing is known about them. Over many thousands of years, their world of perpetual darkness has gradually robbed them of their pigments and their vision. They are now white shadows in a black world, relics of a nocturnal marine ancestor who, equipped with wings, was able to cope with the osmotic changes of increasingly fresh water and set off to explore these flooded caves. Propelled by elegant undulations of its continuous dorsal and ventral fins, these Cubanictes swim with the tranquility that comes from knowing you live in an exclusive world where there are no predators, alert for signals indicating the presence of the freshwater shrimps on which they feed. At present, there are four known species of Cuban blindfish, but in-depth studies have yet to be carried out. How were they able to adapt to the radical changes between two worlds so completely different as the dark freshwater caves and the bright marine world of the reef? Who was the pioneer from the corals that set out on the evolutionary adventure that led to these ghosts of the caverns? Like so many other questions, the answers remain hidden, concealed in the mysterious labyrinth of the impenetrable mangrove forest. Every year, the seasonal rains flood the Zapata marshes. The inland lagoons multiply and the birds arrive to nest, the migratory species joining the local ones. This is a time of abundance, and the mangrove forest comes to life with the movement of the many different species searching for food. Hummingbirds and orioles fly among the flowers, looking for nectars and insects. While in the open, recently flooded areas, there is a veritable explosion of life. Millions of small invertebrates proliferate among the floating vegetation. The larvae attract the fish, and these, the egrets, cormorants, and storks.
With the rains and the water, millions of mosquitoes are born. But the majority of them never reach adulthood as they are trapped by these specialists walking across the water layers and aquatic plants. The long toes of the jacanas enable them to reach anywhere where there is a floating plant. Light and precise, they lift up the vegetation and catch the invertebrates that live below. The American purple Gananul also uses this same technique, though in this case, instead of an invertebrate, it is going to find a surprise. With the increase in available fish, the double-crested cormorants get ready to breed. These cormorants are normally migratory, but the subspecies Floridanus, which lives in southern Florida, and the Cuban archipelago has become sedentary, perhaps because of the year-round abundance of the mango forests. During the mating season, the double-crested cormorants gather in colonies which can contain thousands of couples and build their nests on the ground or in the branches of the different trees of the marshes. The need to find a mate and the concentration of so many cormorants in the areas chosen to build their nests mean there are sometimes fights between neighbors, but these never go further than frantic beating of wings and a shriek or two. On this occasion, the dispute is soon over. Their splashing around has attracted dark shadows beneath the water and the cormorants have learned to respect the sharks that swim in the estuaries. An even larger shadow appears in the clear waters. A manatee is exploring the newly flooded areas in search of weeds and pasture to calm its insatiable appetite. Propelled forward by its rear extremities converted into a wide flat fin, the manatee advances escorted by a permanent army of fish that feed on the sediments stirred up by the mammal and the algae and parasites that cover its body. Every day, a manatee must eat a vegetable matter equivalent to one-tenth its body weight, that is, between 40 and 70 kilos, the equivalent of eating 200 lettuces a day. Its incessant feeding activity is good for the mangrove forest because it clears the water channels, which otherwise would be overrun by vegetation in just a few months. These peaceful sirenias spend their lives in the water, periodically coming out to breathe. It was during one of these pauses for breath that in 1492 Christopher Columbus spotted them, the first ever mention of the species, and confused them with the mermaids described by Herodotus. Today the mermaids are disappearing. In the entire West Indies, including Cuba, there remain no more than 2,500, and unfortunately, each year, this number falls further. The Cuban mangrove forest is still an unknown world concealing biological mysteries and treasures which will astonish the world. A forgotten paradise ruled over by an impenetrable hell of marshy labyrinths, myriads of mosquitoes, and dangerous crocodiles. 
Science has not yet studied the complexity of its creatures and the balance of its ecosystems. And that is part of the charm of the Cuban mango forest, knowing that it remains exactly as it always has been, impenetrable, solitary, virgin. It is such a complex world that virtually nothing is known about it. And nonetheless, all its strength and complexity, all its biodiversity and richness, are due to tiny intrepid travelers that still today, faithful to their spirit, continue to set out on anonymous journeys, crossing the sea and sowing the seeds of paradise. <laughs>